Hi, dear friends and subscribers. Uh, welcome to the Cricket Happening Show today. Uh, well, as I said yesterday, it was the fourth day. It would be very, very interesting uh, in this uh, second test match between Sri Lanka and New Zealand. Well, it was. It was definitely interesting with New Zealand holding the upper hand here. In fact, uh, Sri Lanka on the fifth and final day going into tomorrow are needing another 316 runs with only six wickets remaining to actually win the match with the top half once again consumed by the New Zealand bowlers. So first, uh, uh, New Zealand actually, in fact, Sri Lanka didn't uh, waste uh, much time today. Uh, the partnership between um, um, Suraj Randeve and uh, Tilan Samaravira was nipped in the bud uh, earlier uh, in the morning itself uh, with uh, the first wicket to go uh, be being Tilan Samaravira. Well, they couldn't, in fact, uh, there was no run added um, uh, to that overnight 97 run partnership when uh, Sam Ravira was the first to go, he was caught by Guptil of the bowling of Trent Bolt for on his overnight score of 76 to 5 fours. Uh, soon ran away, uh, contributed 39. Uh, he was uh, bound, gone to an in-swinger from uh, Trent Bolt uh, who got both the wickets. In fact, uh, Trent Bolt was the one uh, who got um, uh, both the very vital wickets to actually break this uh, stubborn partnership which was uh, growing to great lengths uh, on the previous day. And Suresh Dandeve was also going back to the pavilion LBW bowl for 39. And after that, the tail didn't whack. It was all over. Saudi and bolt uh, cleaned it up. Kulashekra was uh, gone for six. Uh, Rangana Herath was gone. A beautiful catch taken by Kane Williamson there of the bowling of Trent Bolt for five. And Ranga was not out on three. And the Sri Lankan innings was absolutely wrapped up. 244 um, all out, uh, thus conceding uh, a lead of uh, 168 runs uh, to New Zealand. And well, as far as the bowling was concerned, Tim Saudi uh, returned figures of 5 for 62, uh, 22 overs and 4 made and 62 runs on 5 wickets. And in fact, it was Tim Saudi and Trent Bold uh, who dealt uh, the most damage to the Sri Lankans. Uh, with Trent Bold, uh, you know, increasingly showing uh, more ability with the ball, uh, 21 over 7 made and 42 runs on 4 wickets. Jitan Patel won for 47. I'm not going to go into those details, uh, just rushing into the New Zealand innings now. From 100, and They were 168 runs ahead. Uh, starting the innings, uh, but uh, New Zealand, Martin Guptill and Brendan McClellan opened the innings, uh, and um, uh, in fact, Martin Guptill, they were very, very watchful. Brendan McClellan was definitely, definitely playing his strokes, but Martin Guptill was the first to go as Aranga got the ball uh, to move out, and Dilshan on the second attempt taking the catch. So Martin Guptill was first to go, and New Zealand were 11 for 1. After that, uh, Brendan McClellan was joined by Kane Williamson. Uh, but Brendan McClellan, after playing some very, very good strokes, in fact, uh, his driving was superb. Uh, he creamed uh, two good fours through extra cover of the bowling of Kulish Shagra, which was very good to see. But Brendan McClellan, uh, trying to, you know, uh, 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 trying to hit Herath out there, uh, missed the ball, and Prasanna Javadane uh, behind the stumps uh, did, uh, and did take off the bails in a flash. And he was gone for 35 with seven fours. Ken Williamson uh, contributed only 18 this time. He was a victim of Kulashekara. And uh, the only other contribution coming in from under, there were only two contributions coming in uh, after that with uh, New, Zealand's, uh, New Zealand actually declaring the innings close at 194 for nine with Ross Taylor once again uh, coming into the, coming uh, to the rescue of the New Zealanders when they were 74 for three when Williamson departed. Uh, Ross Taylor decided to really play second fiddle uh, he decided, he saw that Daniel Flynn was gone for a duck of the bowling of Kulushekara. Van Wyck was also gone for a duck of the bowling of Herat. And Todd Assel, he got a very good uh, the debutant, uh, Todd Assel, to really, really uh, give him able support there. And both of them pushed the score uh, from a score when Van Wyck was out at 75. And this was another 97-run partnership, what uh, Sri Lanka did there. Uh, that's what New Zealand did uh, for the uh, sixth wicket with Todd Assel, the debutant, uh, actually... Uh, looking more aggressive than Ross Taylor. And Ross Taylor played a captain's knock here uh, and it was very important for Ross Taylor to stay there and that's what he really, really played with a very mature head and he was playing a very, very responsible innings and both of them uh, had put on 97 very good runs and with Taylor uh, succumbing uh, to a run out. But before that, it was Todd Assel, the debutant who was out. He was, um, uh, he was out to the bowling of Ranade for 35 with three boundaries. Uh, and uh, that was the only uh, big partnership of note uh, for New Zealand. But uh, Ross Taylor was a victim of a run out when he had a serious misunderstanding with Tim Saudi and he was absolutely fuming uh, when he was walking out to the pavilion. But he had to go and Ross Taylor was run out for 74 
with only two boundaries. Normally, Ross Taylor, you never see him two boundaries, but he really played according to the needs of the game. Uh, that was a real, real captain's knock, according to me. And I think that will play a great role if at all New Zealand is going to go on and win the match tomorrow against Sri Lanka and square the series. Uh, so that was 74, his contribution. Todd Assel, the debutant, um, looking impressive on 35 with three fours. And after that, it was quick work by the Sri Lankans as uh, the tail uh, definitely didn't wag at all. Uh, Doug Bracewell was out for one. Tim Saudi remained not out on eight. Jitan Patel was out for not. Uh, and uh, Ross Taylor, the captain, applying the declaration at 194 for nine, uh, thus setting uh, Sri Lanka a target of 363. Uh, as far as the bowling figures are concerned, Kulashekara had two for 47. Circuits were absolutely shared, one for 39 for Aranga, three for 60 for Rangana Herat, and Suresh ran away two for 37. As far as Sri Lanka were concerned, they were once again reduced uh, to uh, to a very very uh, a poor total at the end of the day with the Sri Lankan score reading 47 for 4 chasing uh, a score of 363 runs they finished with 47 for 4 and the first ball uh, which was bowled by Tim Saudi netted a wicket as Taranga Parnavitana of the very first ball of the second innings was trapped LBW bowled Saudi for a duck after that Dilshan edged uh, to Van Wyck of the bowling of Saudi for 14 with one boundary and the top half was once again consumed by the New Zealanders as the stalwarts Kumar Sangakra was clean ball. It was a very unusual dismissal. Sangakra was trying to ball, work the ball uh, through the legs of the bowling of Bracewell but actually off the tie the ball ricocheted into the stumps and Sangakra was walking for 16 of 34 balls at two fours and Mahela Jaiwardhane the most important wicket was once again taken by Bracewell as Jaiwardhane was caught behind of the bowling of Bracewell for five thus reducing Sri Lanka to a total of 47 for four absolutely the backs against the wall with uh, Tilan Samaravira unconquered on one and Angelo Matthews unconquered on one uh, towards the close of play on the fourth day with Sri Lanka really really uh, wanting to really save this match now at 47 for four uh, now uh, as far as um, the bowling was concerned Tim Saudi uh, nipped in six overs no made in two for 19 he continues to be very impressive Trent bowled, bowled well in the right areas but couldn't capture the wicket. Five was two minutes, none for 12. But the good thing was for them was Doug Bracewell really dug himself in and he, he really hit the deck hard. He's such a type of baller. He had four overs, three maidens, five runs and the rewards of two wickets and those very, very vital wickets of Sri Lankan batsman Kumar Sangakara and Mahela Jayavardhani. And Jitan Patel bowled four overs for one run as play was called off due to bad light. 47 for four Sri Lanka finished with. And on the morrow, Sri Lanka have a great task on hand. They have to score 316 runs more to actually, you know, win this match uh, and take a winning lead. Or it would be New Zealand who will be going to square the series 1-1. It, lo it's, it's it looks more likely that uh, Sri Lanka uh, would be losing this match. But uh, l let me tell you one thing. Uh, it's, it's very easy to predict. It is not going to be easy to predict because um, I know the New Zealand bowlers are doing well. Uh, but as far as the model is concerned, uh, it will be very good to see because let me tell you, uh, I would still give Sri Lanka a chance not to score 363 runs but probably try to save the match because they have two good batsmen at the crease, Tilan Samaravira, who has just hit some good form in this particular test. Angelo Matthews is a, one of those wonderful batsmen uh, who can really, really play well when the chips are down and they still have personage every day and all these three batsmen have good test records. Uh, they have a lot of centuries to their credit, Samar Veira, Jayavardhani, Angela Matthews. Uh, so that would be very interesting. So I wouldn't say that Sri Lanka will go on to win the match, but probably Sri Lanka still have a chance on the final day. And well, if rain and bad light are still going to play a role, well, Sri Lanka would be definitely blessed with that. But if that is not going to be the case, then probably it's going to be New Zealand who is going to tomorrow win this test match and take this. They, they would like to do that. Because it's quite, quite a long time coming, it was last in 2006 that uh, New Zealand actually uh, probably got a win against Sri Lanka. So if they are going to do that, that would be great for New Zealand. So, But as I said, the fourth day was interesting, but the fifth day is going to be more interesting. Because we are going to see the battle between bat and ball, whether New Zealanders uh, still hold the ascendancy with the ball, or whether Sri Lankans can get, get out of this, probably uh, with some... Um, slight assistance from the bad light and rain uh, which has been uh, following in Sri Lanka as you know well but uh, all in all I think it will be a great victory for test cricket if at all there is going to be a result in this match and well I, it looks like definitely there is going to be a result but um, it's going to be 
uh, something very, very uh, interesting. Uh, both the teams, uh, I mean, uh, for Sri Lanka, everything is down. For New Zealand, they are they are done, uh, they are there al already there with their tails up. But tomorrow is another day to watch how things really pan out here at the PCR over. Uh, so that is as far as this particular match is concerned, uh, and uh, we are looking forward to it uh, in a very very eager manner. Uh, and other than that, uh, let me look at some cricket news uh, which I am coming up. The news that I have is that um, England are going for some rotation policy. They want to rest some uh, batsmen and bowlers. Uh, and what they have done uh, is uh, there, are, there is no place for Peterson and uh, Graham Swan in the squad. Uh, it's not because of the form, it's just because of rotation policy. Uh, and probably in the one day years and 2020s, we're going to see a lot of English youngsters getting a first chance on Indian soil. That would be good to see. Uh, other than that, uh, well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, uh, I don't have anything else to say. Uh, that one news which is coming in from Bangladesh is uh, Momin Ulhak, the left arm, a left-handed batsman who has scored very well in the uh, domestic league uh, has been included for the first two one-day internationals against West Indies. Uh, and besides that, uh, Ashley Giles uh, is going to be uh, taking over as the limited overs coach uh, of England from Andy Flower, who will only take charge of the English Test team. Well, dear fans, friends, and subscribers, on this note, uh, I will have to end my cricket afternoon show for today. But I am sure uh, everybody would be. Uh, loving to watch uh, tomorrow's uh, fifth day's play at the PSARA Oval. Uh, that is going to be a real, real contest. Even though it is fifth and final day, yes, definitely, uh, the pendulum is definitely, definitely swinging New Zealand way. Uh, but, you know, cricket, as you know, is a game of gross uncertainties. You know what, uh, how South Africa actually stonewalled the Australian bowling in the, on the Australian pitch in Adelaide Oval and actually, uh, you know, saved the match with Faf places on debut, scoring a century. Well, that is something... Uh, that uh, Sri Lankans would be eyeing tomorrow. They would like to do something that what uh, South Africans uh, did to the Australian bowlers, whether the Sri Lankan uh, batsmen can do the same to the New Zealand bowlers, uh, that remains to be seen. Well, dear fans, friends and subscribers, whatever happens, whatever uh, play comes out tomorrow, it's going to be very, very interesting. But as I said, it's a victory for Test Cricket. Thanks for your company and thanks for watching Cricket Happenings. Your host Ram, signing off for the day. Thank you.